What happens to a product when enthusiasm kicks in and the demand over exceeds the supply? People begin to stockpile their product and then list it on eBay for three, four or even five times retail. We have specific examples of this in the last few weeks with a frenzy going on with toilet paper and stockpiling because of fear in men's hearts that they won't be able to wipe their bottoms. People have been buying a lot of toilet paper and selling it on eBay for $1,000. It's strange. It's really strange. Nonetheless, we have also seen a very similar example with the release of Seiko's Blue Alpinus last year where people purchased multiple watches and then unsold them to the public for twice retail, if not more. That brings me to an interesting question. Are these Casio G-Shocks worth a four or five times premium over retail that sellers are asking in today's market? Stick around and I'll share my thoughts. If you like my content and you want to see more, please help the channel by subscribing and don't forget to hit the notification bell. The first thing that happens when you share a video like this is the people who actually purchase these watches in bulk and are trying to sell them on eBay or other sources at a high premium, they don't like videos like this. And what they do is they press the dislike button down the bottom, just here. Why? Because they don't like being exposed. I get it, I understand. People are trying to make money off these watches. My question is, are these watches worth the premium? Are they worth three, four, five hundred dollars like these sellers are asking? Let's have a look at these watches. Firstly, let's have a look at their design. The design is very, very unique. I like it. It's, it reminds me of something. I don't know, I've seen this somewhere before. If anyone can help me out. Yes, no? It looks very, very familiar, but I like it. I like what Casio has done here. They've made a G-Shock and they've copied an iconic shape, as you can see. And it's beautiful. It's lovely. They've made it into a fun watch and they've introduced it at a really good price, 99 US dollars. That's the initial, initial release date. And look, the dimensions of the watch, it's basically a 45 and a half millimeter case size with an 11.8 millimeters case height. The lug to lug distance is 48.5 and the lug width is 16 millimeters. And I, I have a bit of a problem with that. I like the fact that they've got a quick release strap on both sides, that's lovely, but 16 mil? I mean, that sort of limits your options. It would have been nice if this was like a 20 or 22 mil quick release, I can take this off and I can put a leather strap, I can put an aftermarket silicon, I can put a NATO, I can put anything. That would have made this watch and escalated that much nicer. Such a high level. Put that aside. Let's have a look at some of the other features. So basically it's a 51 gram watch. It's really, really light. It's super light. There's hardly anything in this. I put it on the wrist, which I'll do. There you go. So I put it on the wrist and I can hardly feel that it's on my wrist. It's so light. It's beautiful. It, um, look, as a 45 and a half millimeter watch, it sits not bad. You know, the 48 mil lug width is nice, so it sits really nice. I don't think it sits as flat as it should. I'm sure that this could have been a little bit sort of closer to the wrist. I think the strap itself is maybe uh, not allowing it to come down. But look, I can hardly feel it on my wrist. It's really nice. It's really light. So that's a good thing. Let's have a look at the materials used in this particular watch. The materials used are basically like a, a plastic as well as a carbon composite. It looks to me like, um, you know, a beautiful matte finish on all the watches, whether it's the red, you know, as you can see there, or the other black and white to hands, beautiful. So they've all got the similar finish, which is nice, but um, I like what they've done as far as the general look and the layout. Um, what I do like about this is the hands, the hands, I've got the loom and when I go from outside to inside, this thing shines beautifully, but in that I have a problem myself. I can't read the time. I have no scale showing me where I'm at. I sort of try to double guess myself. So that's a bit of a problem. It would have been nice if the markers on all of these had loom in them. I have a problem with reading these watches. Even this one here, I wore it uh, the other day and I was as I was as I was walking around, it's beautiful. Outside it's fantastic, it's legible. As soon as I got indoors, all I saw was black and just the hands. The hands were the only thing that, that came alive. Same with this, same with this. And because of that, I didn't have any sort of scale as to where, uh, you know, where I am. Is it you know, 25, uh, 25 to three? Is it uh, 25 to two? I don't know. It was just, 
you've got to look twice. And I don't like looking twice at a watch. I'd rather look at it once and say, yep, I got it. That's what legibility is. So I think they're lacking in legibility. Um, you know, put some loom on the markers. Simple fix, you know. They also feature Casio's Quartz Movement, the 5611 movement. So it's a plus or minus 15 seconds per month. Uh, I think that should drain about three three years battery life. So depending on how many times you press your buttons and uh, your functions and so forth, you should get about two and a half to three years out of your battery on these. Uh, they have a stopwatch, uh, world timer, five alarms, you know, during the day. So I'd, I don't know why you'd need five alarms, but you've got five alarms on these. Um, you know, an automatic calendar, double LEDs. So what double LEDs are, you press the light here and as you can see, it backlights the uh, the bottom display, the digital display, just there, but it also illuminates the dial itself. So you can't see it under this light, but I'll try to demonstrate under a switched off light. There you go. So as you can see, it illuminates beautifully. But like I said, there's other options. You know, um, my first Casio, my first Casio, uh, you know, little LED uh, watch like this was years ago. I was about 15 or 16 years old. I loved it. It was great. But I did have a problem with legibility and a lot of the times they just had an LED screen and I used to press the button to light up the screen so I can see the time. I like looking at a watch to read the time. So I like that they've incorporated analog and digital but again it would have been great if it's legible under dark lights as well you know without having to go that extra mile. So I have watches in my collection where I'll be wearing them out during the day. I'll go indoors three, four, five hours later and they're still glowing. You know, some of my Seiko divers for argument's sake, they're still glowing. They've still got beautiful loom on them. So that's really nice. But again, each to their own. This is a particular price point. Yes, at 99 US dollars. Yes, at 150 US dollars, I think it's worth it. But not a great deal more than that. I don't think I can see myself paying, you know, four, five hundred Australian dollars. I can't do that. I can't, I can't justify spending $500 on something like this. I'd rather put the money to something else. But again, that's me. That's me. So, but look, it's a lovely watch. It's a nice design watch. I like what they've done. Uh, and look, if you can't grab them at the right price, stick around. Be patient. You know, the right price is coming. Eventually, things do come down when all the fuss starts to settle. So, I hope you guys enjoyed that. And uh, we'll see you guys next time. Bye.